Good morning, um, Pastor Dale Climola, also Reverend Dr. Dale Climola. I have a doctor of ministry degree from 1994. I am married to Gail. I have five children and about 15 grandchildren. Hopefully I'll get a couple more as time goes on. Um, I'm uh, happy to be your vacancy pastor for this in-between time and pray that I'm useful to you and uh, helpful to the congregation of the Lord's kingdom. We begin with the invocation. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is a day which the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad. glad. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle reading this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 to 25. This is a gracious thing, but mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you, you endure? But if you do good and suffer for it, you endure. This is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He commanded no sin, and committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself, uh, himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the sheepfold and overseer of your souls. The Holy Gospel is a reading from John chapter 10. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by a door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. And so Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone, if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tree. Tis the Christ by man rejected. 
But the deepest stroke that pierced him was the stroke that justice gave. Ye who think of sin but lightly, nor suppose the evil great, here may view its nature right. from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's worship is found in the Epistle lesson from 1 Peter chapter 2. Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ, there's a program, I think it's on Antenna TV, called Wanted, Dead or Alive. It's a cowboy, cowboy show from back in the 50s, maybe early 60s, that are the exploits of a bounty hunter who is after the, the bad guys, uh, trying to keep the western part of the United States safe in that part of our nation's history. Jesus is one who also wants us dead or alive. Or you might say both dead and alive. We have a, a challenge as people living in this world. And that challenge is one where we live in the world, but we're called to not live of the world. In order to be a child of God, we live our lives not by the demands or by the example posed by the world in which you live, but rather we live by the example that is found in Christ Jesus, in his death, and his resurrection, in his perfect life of sinless suffering. And it's in that in which we find ourselves living and dead at the same time. Because we live as God's people, and we die as people of the world. It's just as Jesus did, as his life is called an example for us to follow. He suffered for you, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. But rather he suffered as a result of it, even though he was sinless. In our lives, we're, we live lives that are filled with sin. We sin by thought, word, deed, we sin by conscious effort, and we also sin without recognizing it or realizing it. We're called to repentance because our sin fills our lives and in our minds and our bodies, our desires. We're tempted to do that which is not pleasing to God, but rather that which is pleasing to self. We're called to die to that part of our lives, 
die to our sinful nature. But that's something that we really cannot do because sin is our nature. Perfect, perfect lives is the work of God, the work of Jesus, the work of our Savior. We in ourselves are not able to live the kind of life that God wants us to live. That's why Jesus said you must die to self and rise once again in the one who brings us the resurrection of the body. St. Paul put it this way in Romans chapter 6, Do you not know that you who have been buried, have been baptized in Christ Jesus, have been baptized into his death? Even as Jesus died and was buried in, the, in death, you too might live a new life in him. Our salvation, our lives, our hopes, our dreams, our everything is bound up in that which God has done for us in Jesus. It's in His nature, God's nature, to forgive and bring us new lives. As is said in the Gospel lesson, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. The new life is a life that is begun in baptism, begun when the Spirit of God is placed in our hearts and we live as people of God, no longer people of the world. But daily we struggle with it. Daily we're tempted to sin. And as a result, daily it's necessary for us to turn to our Lord for His promise of forgiveness and renewal of life. And at the same time, when we sin, we sin against others. And as the people of God, we're called to a life of repentance, where we confess our sins to one another, and in confessing our sins, find freedom by the forgiveness of sins. And so as a result of that, we are reconciled to one another. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And so we have the freedom to be, to be the people of God who have died to sin, to be the people of God who have been raised to life, even as Jesus died and was raised again for your forgiveness and for mine. We're told by Peter that you were straying like sheep, but now you have turned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. May that be true for you as well, that as we die to self, we're brought to life in Jesus our Savior. Amen. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in that faith to life everlasting. Amen. We confess to one another and to our Lord the second article of the Apostles' Creed. And in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own, live under his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, and it is the
for all eternity. This is most certainly true. We continue with the prayers. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace imparted with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of, of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of all, all let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For seasonable weather, and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult and dangerous, especially those who are on the front lines of medical care for those with the COVID virus, we pray for Brandon and Hunter that in their military service they would be kept free of harm and danger. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the sick and for the dying and for all who care for them, especially we pray for Roberta, Miriam, Sandy, Chris, John, Michelle, Joe, Courtney, Tony, Martin, Dwayne, Beth, Barbara, John, Lori, Neil, Todd, Steve, and Chris. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We pray for Joyce and Dewey and their family that they might be kept alive in faith and hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead and from your Spirit's work in their lives to perfect them in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. And finally, for those in need of body and soul, comfort and forgiveness, health and healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, Merciful Father, since you have awakened from the dead the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that we may hear the voice of our shepherd and we may know him who calls us by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank, thank you, my, my Heavenly Father, Father through Jesus Christ, Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Amen.